Shabbat Shalom, child of Yah. Welcome to this week's Shabbat Table Mana. And we will be discussing 1 John 5, verse 14 to 15. 1 John 5, verse 14 to 15. And you know what? Have you noticed how the Word of the Father, this Bible that we read and study, how it's alive and always interacting? It's almost like every day or uh, every week that Ruach, uh, the breath of Abba Yahuwah, uh, he spirit, as if he's teaching us or shows us something new or continually out of his word every day, every week. So Father just continues to build on it daily or weekly. I want to ask you a question. How many times have you heard 1 John 5 verse 14 to 15 being spoken of in motivational messages or in teachings. It's almost like it's a name it and claim it message. But do we understand the context of these verses? Do we understand the heart of the Father in every verse or even in every word written in the Bible? Let's read these verses. 1 John 5 Verse 14 to 15, it says, And this is the boldness that we have in him, that if we ask what, whatever according to his desire, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So basically it says, if we have the confidence to approach the Father, to speak to him and ask him, then he'll do it. But is that truly the heart of these two verses, verse 14 and 15? We must understand one thing today. With me agreeing with the Father or with me coming in line with His Word and even me reminding myself of His Word, I still need to believe. I still need to stand on His promises and not to get discouraged because you see, whenever we ask something of the Father, the thing is always, is it His will or is it my will? Sometimes we say we've prayed, but we don't see breakthrough. Or sometimes we pray and there's breakthrough, but it's not when I wanted it, but it comes in the Father's timing. You see, Abba will do His will in His timing. I just need to get in line with Him. So with this in mind, Let's study these verses of 1 John 5, verse 14 to 15. The first word I would like to have a look at, it, it starts off by saying, and this is the boldness. That boldness is the concordance number G3954, G3954, and it's mentioned 31 times in the Bible. Yes, it means confidence, to boldly proclaim, to speak openly or to ask openly. But listen, it also means freedom in speech. So boldness is to be without concealment. Nothing even. It's a, boldness is a free and fearless confidence in the Father. It's to be outspoken about Him. So if I can sum up boldness, it's to say boldness is the belief or the confidence that you and I can have or rely on someone or something. Boldness or confidence is a state of being certain about the truth of something. But also confidence. Confidence is a belief or a self-assurance arising from an appreciation of someone's abilities or qualities. You understand? So to sum this up is we believe in the Father, we trust in Him because we know Him. Therefore, we walk in boldness and confidence to know that He will do as He will, according to His purpose, that the Father will deliver according to His promises in the Bible. So it's to know that there's a certain favor or blessing in my life that the Father has spoken over me, and therefore I stand on that promise. Boldness or confidence goes even deeper. 
the concordance number that we just spoke about, G3954, is also linked with another number, G1723. And the primary root or, or uh, the meaning is to be in a place, a certain place, or a certain time, or a certain state. In other words, it means to be alongside, to be born out of, or to be born into. But listen, it also means to give self-worth to. So to be confident in the Father is to have the self-confidence about Him. Is to rely and to trust and to believe in Him only. So before we start looking into this verse deeper, we must understand that it's about fellowship. John writes about something we have in Abba Yah. So John is saying here, he says, there's someone else I need to have confidence in. He's saying it's not about me. It's not me acting in my strength. It's not about my physical abilities. It's not about my planning skills or know-how. It's about the Creator. The one who is able to. The one who is able to supply, to heal, to restore, above and beyond anything I can do or want. So I must understand one thing clearly today. What the Father expects, the trust and the confidence and the boldness we must have in Him, is different to what the world teaches us. Where the world says that I must live my best life now, it's all about me. You know, we, we have no fear for the world or whatever. Father says we must walk in boldness in Him, to be fearless in Him. I must stand on the rock of ages, which is the Messiah Himself. The second word that I would like to look at is the word desire. Desire is the concordance number G2307. And it is desire of what one wants. The, the desire is what you and I wishes for. Or a desire for what has been determined over your life and my life. Like the father's desire. So John is saying that, that what Abba wishes to be done will be done according to his purpose. It's what he desires for us. You see, we must always understand the Father's heart. And it's Abba's heart to bless you and me through his son, Yeshua. And this is exactly what we say when we pray. Like for instance, Matthew 6 verse 10, that where we pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will or your desire be done on earth as it is in heaven. We must understand this today. That when he says, when he talks about desire, it's not your desire, my brother and sister. It's not my desire. It's the Father's desire. It's His will and purpose over our lives. So when I walk in boldness. I walk in the boldness because I know the desires the Father has for me. The purpose in the world He's spoken over me in my life. When we read Acts 22, 14, we read, And He said, The law of our fathers has appointed you to know, in other words, to be intimate with His desires, and to see the righteous one, and to hear the voice from His mouth. You see, it's a father's heart, it's his desire that you and I should have fellowship with him, that we should know his will, his purpose. That we should hear from his mouth what he, what he wants for us. So can we see this today, that John is saying that this is the confidence that we can have in Abba Yah, that it should be about him firstly. So when I walk in confidence, when I pray with boldness, is because I have the insurance of who the Father is. I have this belief, this trust, this know of who He is. My confidence should be directed towards Him and not myself. 
It should be about Abba Yah and His purpose. In other words, my prayers is directed towards the Father's will. I want to say this again. My prayers are directed or is directed towards the Father's will. It is for the Father to decide. It is for Him to do His will, to let His kingdom come in my life. But in all of this, I must have confidence to know that He hears me. That in prayer, because I speak into uh, the Father's heart or I speak to Him about His will, uh, I have confidence in His heart for me because I know His plans for me. It's according to His purpose. So let's read this chapter, chapter from verse 1. And let's understand the context of what I've been discussing here in verse 14 and 15. So let's read 1 John 15, verse 1 to 15. And I want you to hear this clearly today, my brother and sister. Hear what John is speaking here. He says, everyone who believes that Joshua is the Messiah has been born of a lure. And everyone who loves the one bringing forth also loves the one having been born of him so if we love the father then we love the son by this we know that we love the children of Alua when we love Alua and guard his commands for this is the love of Alua that we guard his commands and his commands are not heavy because everyone having been born of Alua overcomes the world and this is the overcoming that has overcome the world our belief can we see this our belief that confidence and that boldness who is the one who overcomes who is the one who overcomes the world but he who believes that Yeshua is the son of Elua this is the one that uh, that came by water and blood Yeshua Messiah not only by water but by water and blood and this and it is the spirit who bears witness because the spirit is truth because there are three who bear witness the spirit and the water and the blood and the three are in agreement if we receive the witness of men the witness of Alua is greater because this is the witness of Alua which he has witnessed concerning his son the one who believes in the son of Alua has the witness in himself the one who does not believe in Alua listen has made him a liar because he has not believed the witness that Elua has given concerning his son. And this is the witness that Elua has given us everlasting life. And this life is in his son. He who possesses the son possesses life. He who does not possess the son of Elua does not possess life. I have written this to you who believe in the name of the son of Elua so that you know that you possess everlasting life and so that you believe in the name of the son of Elua. And this is the boldness. Can we hear this now? And this is the boldness because we believe in the son of Elua and this is the boldness that we have in him. That if we ask whatever according to his desire, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have asked of him. So John is teaching you and me today, my brother and sister, that firstly, we must be born out of Messiah. We must carry his image within us. And then John says, we the children of Messiah must be obedient. In other words, I can't be a rebel and think I can do whatever pleases me and that the Father hears me. I must be obedient. Like a child who obeys his parents, so I must obey the instructions of Abba Yah. In verse 5, John is saying that if we believe, if we have confidence in Messiah, if we have this boldness in Messiah Yeshua, then we will overcome this world. Again, can we see that it's not about my strength or abilities. The only, the, the only thing I have to do is to believe. To be bold in Messiah, to, to, to trust in Him, to have this confidence in Him. Verse 6, 7 and 8 is um, verses that we will discuss much later 
as the Father will. When the Father releases a teaching on verse 6, 7, and 8, then we'll discuss that. But can we see here that the Spirit is the one who equips us when it comes to Messiah? And then from verse 9, we see that John is making a clear statement here. That if we do not believe in Messiah Yeshua as our Savior, then we are making our Yah a liar. You see, because then we trust in ourselves. Then we have boldness in ourselves. Then we have our own desires and not His. Because then we basically say that Messiah can't save us. Messiah can't provide for us. Messiah can't heal us or restore us. We're saying that I can do anything in my own strength. I, I, there's nothing I can do in his strength. And therefore, I stand on my own ability and power. You see, when we have that lifestyle or that mindset or that attitude, then I'm calling the creator of heaven and earth a liar. And then we get to our verses of today that says that I must stand firm in the belief and in the confidence of Messiah Yeshua, through which we are not just saved, but we receive as well. We, re we read in 1 John 4 verse 17, By this love has been perfected, by this love has been perfected with us, in order that we might have boldness in the day of judgment. Because as He is, so we in this world you see my brother and sister as he is in other words as messiah is light as he overcame the world when i have confidence and boldness in him then i will be his light then i will overcome this world through his ability through his strength just as he was, I will be. Just as he was obedient to his father, I will be obedient. You see, Messiah has came to this world to set the example. To fulfill the instructions of the Father is to give you and me the full picture of how we should live it. 1 John 3, 21 says, Beloved ones, if our heart does not condemn us, we have boldness towards Allah. So let's stay in his truth. Let's stay in his instructions and let's be led by Ruach, by the Spirit of the Father. For then we have boldness and faith in him. Because the result or the effect of believing on Messiah Yeshua or to have confidence in him is that we have the assurance that our prayers will be answered. Can we see this today? Because we walk in obedience, because we have fellowship and intimacy with Him, because I know Him, therefore I have this assurance that my prayers will be answered. We must always understand this, that when I'm born of Messiah, when I have fellowship and intimacy with Messiah Yeshua, then I know His word, and therefore I will not be asking anything that Abba Yah has not appointed me. I will not be asking anything that is not planned for me or promised for me. I will not ask him to grant me anything that is contrary to his will or that is not his purpose for my life. Because we have fellowship with Messiah, because we ask for his will in our lives, therefore we will not ask what he has not purposed for our lives. Can we see this? James 4.3 says, You ask and do not receive because you ask evilly in order to spend it on your own pleasures. What we need is for Messiah to fill our minds and our hearts with his thoughts. Then his desires will become our desires. You see, and then we have this confidence because it all flows back to him in prayer. Can we see this today? Because I know Messiah, because I know his word, therefore I ask his desires for my life in prayer. James 4 3 is saying that if we ask out of our own selfish or fleshly needs or likes, then we ask out of our own evil inclinations, our own evil thoughts and needs. And we are certainly not asking according to His will. And therefore we will not receive, therefore He does not hear us. 
We know from the life of Messiah Yeshua here on earth that he only did his father's will and purpose. Listen to what I'm saying today. Therefore, anything I ask the father in the name of his son Yeshua is like the son asking Abba Yah himself on my behalf. Can we see this? Anything I ask in Yeshua's name, when he stands by the Father and, 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 he, and he's my mediator and he's standing there and he says, but your son and your daughter is asking this, Messiah will not ask if it's not the Father's will. Therefore, you and I need to know the Father's will. Therefore, we need to stand on these instructions. We need to study the word. So that is why we can only ask Abba Yahuwah what his son would ask himself. I'm going to say that again. When we walk in the boldness and the confidence of the Father, we know his word. We know his desires. Therefore, whatever I then ask, that's the word for today, whatever I then ask Abba Yahuwah and his son asks on my behalf, it will be done. That is what the Bible teaches us. John 8, 29 says, And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Is that my heart? Is that your heart, my brother and sister? To always do what pleases him. What pleases him is his desires. Do we always do his desires? Do we walk in boldness and confidence with his desires? Not mine. Let's pray. Abba, our Father, Daddy, thank you for this beautiful day. Abba, thank you for the sun that shined. Thank you for parts of the country that received rain this past week. Abba, thank you for your presence in our lives, Abba. Thank you that you are in control and you are the one who sits on the throne. And there is none above you. You are the creator of heaven and earth. And I honor you today and I praise your mighty name, Abba Yah. Thank you, Father, for the Shabbat. As we enter into the Shabbat, may we pray in confidence father may we walk in boldness before you may we come in boldness to your throne room the shabbat father and may we ask your desires may we ask your desires for our lives for our children for our families for our finances father whatever may we ask your desires may we not come with our own worldly of fleshly lusts and needs, Father, but may we approach you in boldness to seek your presence, Father, to sit at your king's table face to face. Thank you, Abba Yah. Thank you for your son, Yeshua. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the price that was paid. Thank you that we can be born in him. Thank you that your son's light is in us. May we walk and talk in the boldness of to let your kingdom come, Father. May it be about you. I praise you and I honor you, Father, and I pray all of this in your Son, Yoshua's mighty name, the one to whom all authority, all power belongs. Therefore we pray, let your kingdom come. Let your will be done in our marriages. Let your will be done in our relationships with our children and our families. Let your will be done in our fellowships, Father. May your light shine. Let your kingdom come. Amen. Receive this blessing from Abba Yah. Yevarechecha Yahuwah v'yishmerecha. Ja, er, ja, hua, pana, ve, lecha, vi, chunika. Jesa, ja, hua, pana, ve, lecha, vi, asem, lecha, shalom. Aber, ja, hua, bless you and keep you. 
Abba Yah makes His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Abba Yah lifts up His countenance upon you, my brother and sister, and He gives you peace. Shalom, shalom. Enjoy your Shabbat, guys.